some tips and tricks for this excerpt. In my opinion, this is the most difficult excerpt out of the three for TMEA this year, and I personally spent the most time practicing this one out of the three. The character of this piece is very militaristic and aggressive, so your bow stroke and your dynamic and your vibrato should reflect those characteristics in your playing. Number one is to learn the second violin part. You can find this on the New York Phil archives, which I've listed below. Once you learn the octave down, it'll be so much easier to learn the octave up, and you won't be struggling to figure out what the pitch even should be, because some of those ledger lines go really, really far up. The New York Phil archives also has fingering suggestions from past players that have played on those parts. I looked at those parts to see some options for fingerings and was able to choose the best option for me. Number two, slow slurred practice with slides for all of your shifts. Number three, know your half and whole steps for everything and also your hand frame. So if you have a one, two, half step, whole step three, and half step four, for instance, you need to know exactly what that hand frame is and pattern and then you can map it out and practice that hand frame one, two, three, four. Number four, play as many notes as you can as double stops. This helps to really ingrain the relationship in your fingers and how that feels and also trains your ear the relationship between notes. So I'm just going to go through some of these lines and show you how I might practice this. So this is from 32. So I started in third position and then this big shift I slid up and played it as a double stop first. So it's a really big slide to that shift. I know that that's a half step, so three and four need to be very, very close together. Notice I'm doing everything legato and slurred, but actually with the bowing that's written, you just won't be stopping in between like you will when you play it at performance tempo. And eventually when you take the slurs out, then you're still doing that slide, but you're hiding it because your bow is stopped when you're actually doing the slide. So. Double stop there. Another double stop. Know that these are a whole step apart, the two and three. So that's a fit, so you can play twinkle twinkle even though it's really high. Then this shift down is really big, so make sure that you slide down and measure that from three to four. So I might practice that shift like 10 times in a row, exactly like that. So from there, I want a two on E flat. Pass up again. Two in E natural. Notice I'm also not using any vibrato when I'm practicing for intonation. That's because vibrato distorts the pitch, right, in the oscillation, so just having the purest form of the pitch is best when we're learning for intonation. Okay, so this is from the E flat. I have a one on E flat. You can do all of these as double stops. To a half step here, two, three. And then here, I'm on a two on D, and then I shift up to one, which is just right across the string from where the two is. So it's a really small shift. So all these octaves should be played blocked. And the one and four should stay down the whole time. You just keep inching it up. So 
this shift is hard because you're releasing to shift up. You have an open E in the middle, but you can still practice that shift as a slide. And then it'll be a lot easier to predict where that first finger is going to go and shift up to. So that's how I practice everything super, super legato and slurred and slide in between every shift and add double stops. So once that feels comfortable, then you can add in the bow stroke, which needs to be very much in the string and very metronomic, very militaristic and exact. So there needs to be a bite on each 16th note pickup. So you'll sort of release the stroke at the end of the long note and then re-attack. To make sure that you have a good sounding point the whole time and that you're not over the fingerboard and that you have pretty flat hair. If you're too much on side hair, it's gonna make the sound more weak and you're gonna hear more of the wood. A couple measures before 36, we have a ritenuto marked, which is then crossed out. So uh, listen to some recordings and decide how you want to slow down into the largamente. Um, it's pretty standard to do a gradual slow down into 36. So I'd say if you did that, you would be pretty safe. So once you do these octaves, um, there's accents on a lot of the beginnings of these slurs, so make sure that you bring that out with some vibrato and a little bit of stress in your bow. And also make sure that the rhythm is very precise. Da 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 ba da da ba da da. After that, we have the 16th notes that are all accented, so make sure that they're all stressed with a lot of bow and emphasis. Very powerful, you can sort of do a long brush stroke to bring those out. I shift up on D to first finger. And then I also shift here with an intermediary note. So that's how you'll be able to know exactly where that high B flat should be. And eventually that intermediary note will disappear, but you'll still have that underlying structure with your left hand. So that'll look like this. So I still shifted up with that first finger, like a big slide, I just didn't play the slide. And then I knew exactly that my fourth finger was gonna be in tune. So here we go again. I shift down to the fourth finger, third position on D, and then extension back to G, and then half step to G sharp, and then up to third. And then you could do, but those are weaker fingers, so I decided to, so I could end on a third finger there. I hope these tips are helpful for you and the fingerings that I've included here. Um, just know that these are my personal fingerings and they might not work for everyone. So take a look at that New York Phil archive and see if one of those players has a fingering that you like better. The goal is that it's most consistent and in tune for you. So what works for me might not work the best for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments or would like to work with me, you can contact me at my website or you can write a comment or question below in the comments. Good luck and have fun.